Hello guys, this is Code and Code, and this is going to be a lecture on connected components. In this lecture, we are going to study about connected components and how we can count the total number of connected components given uh, there are in a given graph. So let's start the lecture. So first of all, it is important to know what are connected components. Suppose this is a graph, then these are three connected components. A connected component is a set of vertices such that if you choose any two nodes from from a set of vertices then there exists a path between those two nodes for example this forms a single connected component because if you choose any two node uh, from this set then there exists a path between those two nodes uh, by definition a single node itself is a connected component so this is a connected component that is a separate connected component than this now this forms another connected component as there are three elements and each three of which are connected that is if you choose any two then there exists a path between them so hence this graph contains three connected components now when there is a notion uh, when there there are directed graphs then there is a notion of strongly and weakly connected components strongly connected components are having the same definition as, connect, as connected components so the connected components are having definition that these are a set of vertices such that if you choose any two nodes from that set then there must be a path from one node to another same goes for strongly connected component but the thing here is that if there is an edge then it is directed in the case of directed graph that is the same edge cannot be used to traverse from a to b and b to a in this in this case there is only a single path possible as directed as indicated by the edge so this edge indicates that you can move from this node to this not other way so using the same definition just try to count the total number of connected components in this graph so in this graph the total number of strongly connected components are three these are this the blue colored one the red and the yellow colored one so there are three connected components the blue colored ones are single connected component because if you choose any two node from blue ones then there exists a path from one node to another and other way around so if you choose these two nodes then there exists a path from this node to this node as you can see you can directly go from here to here using this node or from this node to this node you can go like this so if you choose any two nodes from these four nodes then there exists a path from a to b and b to a but that not uh, that is not true with this node i mean this cannot be the part of this connected component as as you can see if you choose any two nodes say this and this then there exists a path from this node to this but doesn't uh, exist a path from this node to this and hence it have to be in a separate connected component so goes for this but since this is strongly connected component and uh, there are other algorithms to find strongly connected component we would look at those algorithm later in this series so if the given graph is directed and if we assume okay the graph is not directed if you assume that then the and then count the connected component then it becomes a weakly connected component of that directed graph so i've taken the directed graph and i'm assuming that there are no directed edges and in that case the graph would contain only a single connected component and that connected component would be known as weakly connected component of a directed graph so all this was for your knowledge and in this lecture we are only going to consider a non-directed graph so let's start and see how we can count the connected components using dfs that is def first search if you you haven't studied dfs I, I i recommend you to go and check out the dfs lecture first so as you can see if you can count there are two connected components one is this one and another is this one there are two connected components so the question is how we can count number of connected components so using dfs when you if if you make a dfs call to any of the node then the whole connected component gets traversed 
what I mean to say is that suppose in the main function we made a DFS call to one node one then we would reach node one as soon as we reach we make it visited this is visited array so we make it visited and then you would traverse the adjacency list of one and in that list you would find find only five because one is connected to find five only hence you would make a recursive dfs call to five as soon as you reach node five you make it visited and then in the adjacency list there are one one two and six in the adjacency list of five now one is already visited so five would not make a dfs call to two oh uh, sorry one because one is already visited now five see that okay six is not visited so five would make a dfs call to six and then six gets visited and then in the adjacency list of six there are five four and eight so five is already visited so six would make suppose makes a dfs call to four and hence four gets visited in the adjacency list of four there is only six and six is visited so the work is four is done so it would track back to six now six would continue its dfs it has made call to four now only thing remains is eight so it would make a dfs call to eight and hence eight gets visited now in the adjacency list of eight there are six and two and six is already visited so eight would make a dfs call to two and hence two would get visited and and hence now in the adjacency list of two there are five and eight and since both of those are visited and hence the work of two is completed so it would track back to the node which have made a dfs call to it and hence it would tra track back to eight from eight it would track back to six and six it would track back to five and then one and from dfs one we would track back to the function from where dfs one was called and hence we would go back to main function now one important thing you would notice is that if you make a dfs call, call to any node in a connected component then all the no nodes of it gets visited as you can see all five one two four six one two four five six eight gets visited and hence this we can use to count the connected components what we can do is in main function we can run a loop from one to n and then whatever node is not visited we would make a dfs call to that so in this case what would happen we would run a loop from 1 to 8 then we would say okay one is not visited so we would make a dfs call to one and increment the connected component count as soon as you make a dfs call to one all these nodes would get visited so and we would come back from dfs one now i would become two and since two is already visited we would not make a dfs call to two now i would become three and since three is not visited we would make a dfs call to three and hence three and seven would get visited now i would become four four is already visited and then i would become five five is already visited six seven and eight and hence this way you can count the total number of connected components so if you look at the code it would be something like this here you declare vector and you take input so i am leaving that part you initialize the connected component count to be zero and then you run a loop from one to n where n are total number of nodes and you would see whether the ith node is visited or not if the ith node is not visited which means the whole connected component in which the ith node lies is not visited and hence you would make a dfs call to that and increment the connected component count and as you make a dfs call to that node you know whenever a node whenever we made a dfs call to that node the whole connected component gets visited and hence we would not make a dfs call to the same connected component more than once and hence we would able to count the connected components hence after this loop runs completely we the cc count has the total number of connected components so in this lecture we saw how theoretically we can count the total number of connected components in the next lecture i would show you and Im implement this technique to solve a problem from hacker so thank you guys for watching and yeah keep learning